Many years ago, the leader of a crack communications unit was sentenced to prison by a court of public opinion for a crime that he didn't commit. This man promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade into the broadcasting underground. Today, still wanted by the government and the enemies of good men everywhere, he survives as a soldier for higher thinking. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find it, maybe you can hear the Victory Unlimited show. Many of you know me. I am Victory Unlimited, and this is the Victory Unlimited show. The only show dedicated to helping you become a better person today than you were yesterday. Today, we're going to talk about the Black Panther. And if you think I mean the Black Panther Party, then you're incorrect. And if you think I mean the 761st United States Tank Division, then you're wrong again. Though both are worthy subjects, they just don't happen to be the topics for today. Today, we're going to talk about the Black Panther movie. So let's get right to it. True, we already know that Black Panther is a highly successful Marvel Studios movie. And yeah, we all know that Black Panther is a superhero who has enhanced strength, speed, and cat-like powers that he gets from a combination of extensive training, scientific technology, and mystical powers. But he's also a king. And as a king, he's also skilled at knowing how to successfully interact with and deal with people which is all about strategy and politics. So today, just like a cat has nine lives, I'm going to drop some knowledge bombs about nine things that the Black Panther movie can teach you about how to claw your way to the top in life. But first, warning. If you're one of the three people who still haven't seen this movie yet, know that the list that I'm about to share with you may contain some spoilers. So let's roll quick and dirty style. The number one thing that the Black Panther movie can teach you about how to claw your way through life is live by a code of ethics. That's right. Have a belief system. Adopt a self-empowering code of ethics to live by. This is really the first step on a lifelong journey to being a better man, a better woman. Hell, just being a better person today than you were yesterday. Without an internal moral compass, a fully formed and functioning sense of right and wrong, you're going to get pulled and jerked around all your life by the random whims, thoughts, and opinions of other people. The Panther always had somebody in his ear the whole movie, all with compelling arguments. But at the end of the day, he, as the king of Wakanda, just like you, as the master of your domain, had to ultimately take responsibility for the life decisions that he made. Number two, practice infinite improvement. In other words, don't just keep tweaking, adjusting, and readjusting your plans, but keep improving yourself too. Don't aim just to be good enough to get the job done or to just accomplish the mission, but dedicate yourself to outdoing your fiercest competition. And no, I'm not talking about other people. Your fiercest competition today should actually be you from yesterday. You understand me? Just like the Panther's sister, Shuri, basically told him that just because something is good, that doesn't mean it still can't be better. So this is why you must be your own one man or one woman research and development department and keep embracing technology. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, continually upgrade yourself. Number three. Be resourceful. Don't, don't, don't be a one trick pony or, or a one punch fighter. Focus on creating options for yourself for every scenario that you find yourself in and be willing, ready, and able to exercise those options. Be forward thinking. Have multiple strategies and alternative plans to accomplish your goals. Learn from the Panther. When he had to go up against a gun-toting military force, he used his claws with speed and stealth. When he went up against enemies in armored cars and SUVs, he used kinetic energy blasts. And, and when he went up against Killmonger, he used a jagged-edged blade. So my question to you is, what have you got in your resource arsenal, soldier? 
What you got? What you got that'll help you overcome the challenges on your job, at your school, in your relationships, etc.? Huh? What you got? Do you even do do you even have an arsenal? Because if you don't have one, you better get one. Number four. Autonomy reigns supreme. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Maintain your autonomy by any means necessary. That's right. As much as you can be your own person, be able to stand alone and or at the top and even better. Make this your preference. Think like a king. Strive to be in a position where you are the one that makes the rules. You are the one that develop your own traditions. Be willing to blaze a bold new trail all by yourself rather than be so quick to become just another follower. Or as that great prophet Heavy D once said in the legendary rap song, we got our own thing. Don't be down with anybody. Let them all be down with you. And I, and I realize that this may not always be possible to accomplish, but there is wisdom in making this your goal. But above all, never, never, ever let anyone control, subjugate, or enslave you or your thought processes and realize that the best way to increase the odds of you becoming the king of your own castle is if you are the one who builds it. Number five, commitment is key. That's right, be committed. Come to grips with this fact ahead of time. Getting what you want out of life is not something that's accomplished by cowards, but by the courageous. In many cases, soldiers, victory in this life is a test of endurance, not an exercise in instant gratification. Do not, do not allow yourself to be disappointed, permanently put off or dejected on your way to reaching your goals and objectives. You should always keep the main thing, the main thing. Don't, don't fall for the temporary distractions or, or decoys that take your eyes off your target. Remember that fortune favors the bold and this fight ain't over until you win. And an interesting anecdote about commitment from the movie is this. Even when the panther was near death and actually communicating with his ancestors already on the other side, his commitment to righting the wrongs and correcting the injustices of the past was so strong he practically refused to die until he made good on his promises to make things right. Now, how's that for commitment? Number six, relationships are everything. <laughs> Remember that life is about relationships and never ever forget that this is what life is all about. You know, there is a, a school of thought that says that your life is usually only as successful or unsuccessful based upon the quality of people that you choose to surround yourself with. This is the primary reason why you should choose your allies carefully and make sure that you're very mindful of which ones you choose to build lasting bonds with. But by the same token, there's also a lot of wisdom in making sure that you know your enemies just as well or even better than you know your friends. Why? Because yesterday's friend can be tomorrow's enemy and today's enemy can actually teach you things about life that you might never learn from a friend. In the movie, Wakabi is an example of a friend who taught the panther how some friendships are so fragile that they can be lost if you ever fail to meet the other person's needs or expectations, no matter how hard you might try. And an example of how you can learn a lot from an enemy was when the panther finally realized that though Killmonger's methods were questionable at best, his, his burning desire to seek justice for the people was actually a positive one at its core. But in regards to true unbroken relationships that enrich our lives and how much they mean to us and meant to us, all we have to do is realize that hardly no one on their deathbed says, you know, I, I really regret not spending more time at work. No, they talk about how they regret not spending more time on their mission, their life's purpose, 
and specifically how much they regret not spending more time enjoying and cultivating better relationships with their families, their friends, and the multitude of other people that help give their lives meaning. Number seven, your vision powers your life. That's right, have a vision. You already know the scriptural verse. It says that without a vision, the people perish. But I'm here to tell you that it's not just the people, but you too. You can't be a, a, a leader if you don't have a plan. And not just a plan, but a clear strategy that you can confidently communicate to others that will inspire them to either follow you or or to be inspired to aid, abet, and assist you as you go about manifesting your vision. In other words, you have to inspire the people around you to be pro you and pro your vision to inspire them to become your allies, to invest in you and or to give you what you need to be successful. And now you finally know what the word provision really means, don't you? Number eight. Be a creator. Yes, be a creator, not a destroyer. And when I say be a creator, and when I say be a creator, I mean be a solution to somebody's problem rather than the cause. That's one of the most valuable lessons that the Panther learned by the end of the movie. His life, his knowledge, and his resources were never meant to remain hidden and separated, but were meant to be shared, but were meant to be shared with the world around him. In fact, if you pause for a moment and look at the world around you, you will notice that everything you see that's been created was created to be a solution to a problem. Shelter was created to protect us from the harsh outside environment. Food was created for us to enjoy, to help us grow, to maintain, and to live a long, healthy life. And then there's you. I challenge you to pause right now and go look at yourself in the mirror and tell me what you see. Because I'm here to tell you that no matter what you think you see, understand that what you also see is a solution to somebody's problem. So, so stop selling yourself short and get out there and become what you were created to be, a solution to somebody's problem. Which finally brings us to number nine, which is simple, never, ever give up in life. And I don't care if like a cat, you feel like you're on life number nine and you're ready to give up, just don't do it. We have many, many enemies in life, whether they're mental, physical, financial, or spiritual. But regardless, know that sometimes these enemies tend to fight us all the harder, the closer we are to achieving our goals, to, to manifesting what we want, to winning in life. So this is why you should never give up, because as long as your heart is still beating, the clock is still ticking. And remember, this fight ain't over until you win. So yes, you might only have just the one life left, Panther Soldier, but that just might turn out to be the only life you need. <laughs>